John Hall down at Jimmy's shop. We're on the road. Uh, Jimmy built this guitar. I'm going to explain on fretting shortly. I like to fret my guitars on the guitar because I can get the fretboard as good as we can possibly get it. Uh, so I use a fret buck to put the bottom on the body and I just put the, the frets in normally. Now we're going to level the frets. We got the tuners in. We're going to have to make a nut. We're going to have to make a saddle, but I'm going to now show you how to level up the frets, dress them up. So, for me to do a fret job, these are the tools that I'm going to use. I have a fret nipper, and if you can take a good look at this, it's fret, it's ground, so that we have a nice chisel point. We have a machined aluminum bar for setting up level. I use pillar files. I have a straight edge and a crowning file. Now here's one little trick that I've learned. I take tape. Now tape sometimes can leave a mark on your finish. So you just put it against something to take a little bit of the adhesive off. Lay that down. And that just takes some of the tackiness off. So now I'm supporting right along here so if I I don't want to scratch a finish obviously. The next step is I generally have a little cup here because I want to take all the fret ends that I nip off and put them somewhere so I don't scratch them. And you can hear them coming off. That's stuck good. And I'm just flush trimming them. Now I did kind of rough trim these when I put them in yesterday. Now my fretting process is I use a little bit of water into the slot and a drop of glue and the glue comes out at the bottom of the slot here to help seal that slot from so that it's closed up looking so it looks like it's kind of finished. Okay so I'm just coming up here and I'm trimming off the high frets. You want to be careful you don't want to lean this you want to keep it straight. Once I get these trimmed off the next thing is I'm going to flush file the frets. Okay, I am going to take that one mill file you had there. Yeah. All right. And I'm just going to use my thumb to hold that. And you can hear it. So I kind of work over the body first. better put some more tape there. Double up the tape. Tape is a lot easier than finish touch up and don't be afraid to put a pile on there if you feel you need to. You can also take your file to a sander and take the edge teeth off and make it a safe edged file. Now and tap your file to keep the, the filings out of it. And you can hear it as it flushes off. And don't push too hard. What angle are you trying to get at? Right now I'm going I'm going square with the fretboard because I am basically trimming the frets even to the fretboard in this stage. Okay, they're getting there. Now I'll go up here. I can get a little crazy here. Find your high ones. And then once you get them kind of even, you can start riding up and down. Don't think you're going to flush one at a time. Take the high one and just work them down. Oh, your wheels are rolling.
Now you can hear it starting to get flush. Hear it? I'm now flush. Here I got to do a little bit more. Now, you can see I have them flushed off. Okay, you see that? Now I'm going to do the other side. And since I'm right-handed, I got to flip the guitar. I can do a lot of things right-handed and left-handed. This is one of the things I cannot do. Now you got to be careful if you try to get too cute on the trimming you can actually kind of screw up the fret end. So you're better off filing down than trying to nip them down. And I can't stress this enough, don't over push because that's when you get the file scaled. And you'll hear it when I'm flush. You can hear it. I'm good up here. A little high here yet. There. So that's level. And you can see that side's level. Okay, now the next thing I want to do is now I am going to put my bevel. I'm going to start beveling the frets. Now, what you want to do, 25 to 30 degrees is pretty much where I like to be. And being an old machinist, I can do this by hand. But there's a lot of nice little jigs out there. And I'm just going to hold this over. Oh, he got one. So you can see there's an angle there. You can see that. Okay. Make sure you don't hit the top. And don't get cute. Do them all. I can feel that we're getting a nice bevel. Now I like to do it by hand because now I'm going to take this down just to the point where I hit the corner of the fretboard. And you'll hear it. And if you look at the angle, you'll be able to see the light. Come over here and take a look right down here. You can see light where I can see that I have the bevel is still not to the fretboard. You see that? Mm -hmm. Okay. So now I'm going to bring that down. And yes, you can use the block if you want to. I'm using my thumb to set the angle. And now we're getting it closed up. If Glenn takes a look at the picture, you can now see we're just about there. Now you can hear that. I'm touching the fretboard. Now when I run my fingers down here, you aren't getting your fingers cut up. Now I got to do a little bit more down here at the bottom by the sound hole. And 
and that's a pillar file you said, right? Uh, this one here is a pillar file. And a pillar file, I'm using a couple different files. This is a mill file. All right, that's a Nicholson mill file. These are pillar files. And these are more of a finishing file. So now I'm going to use them because that's going to give me a nicer finish on the edge. Now, if you look down the edge, I want to take a look myself here. Okay, all right. You can see they're like little soldiers in a nice, neat row. You got it? Now I'm going to do the other side. <clears throat> And it's the same process, flush them off. And I have these pretty much ready to be flushed. I'm just checking them again. Now I'm going to start beveling. So if you do it by hand, you can see what I'm doing here. I'm treating this as fretboard one, fretboard two. But you'll hear this, you'll hear the change as I hit the fretboard. And I'm looking for the light underneath the fret at the fretboard so I can see when I'm touching the fretboard. Now when you're going to the body, kind of keep this end up a little bit so you don't do that. You can hear the light spokes. Now it's going to start going away. You can notice this change in the sound. And that's pretty much there. Now be careful of the the filings because they can leave if you get them in your fingers and you go like that you can put little micro scratches but I'm just running my fingers against here and I can feel that the tang is nice and easy I can feel the sharp corners of the fret wire we're going to take care of that in a minute so now as of right now I think I'm pretty close I want to do a little tweaking right here all right now comes the actual fret leveling. So you can see I have filing here. In my home shop I have rolls of paper that I lay paper down. Uh, do you have a towel? Okay, now the actual fret leveling process is re relatively straightforward. I use something to mark the top of the frets. Uh, and I just take a little bit of magic marker because what I want to do is we're now going to level the fret so that they're nice and straight and flat and true. Later, we're going to make the nut and I'll show you how to set up the nut. Now, it's very important to understand the better you prep your fretboard, the easier the fret job's going to go. If your fretboard isn't true, and straight and flat and all that happy stuff you're going to be grinding a lot of frets away and you don't want to do that so now this is a machined aluminum block it's 320 grit on here and I am just going to let the the bars doing the work I'm just pushing it back and forth and you can there's a little bit of a drop off on the tail which is fine I'm doing fretboard one, fretboard two. If you have a dead flat fretboard, through humidity changes, the top is going to go up and down a little bit. So you want about a 20 thousandths drop off from the body joint fret to the sound hole. That way you don't have to worry about buzzing down the road through humidity changes. So, if 
that little bit of work that I just did, you can see most of the black Sharpie is gone up to about here. And if I put a straight edge on here, I can see that for the most part we're almost cleaned off and we're only talking a couple of thousandths of an inch. But a couple of thousandths of an inch can take it from a great guitar to a buzzy guitar. So I'm now going to clean this up. And you notice I'm doing circle motions, basically concentrating from the body joint to the nut. Now for the extension, you can see there's just a little bit of a kickoff. I'll also note that these frets were hammered in. I'm, I know I'm not condemning anybody who presses them in. You, you find your fretting technique that you feel most comfortable with. This is my lowest fret right here. You can see I'm starting to hit it. So I don't have to necessarily see all of the top of the fret go, I'm just watching the black disappear. That's all I want gone. And it's safe to mention, in order to remove this, you got to remove all of this. And we're only talking a couple of thousand, it's not much. And you can hear we're not flapping anymore, so all of the frets are basically level. That's pretty good. Now I'm going to come down here. Oh, here it is. Now your, let's call it your correction of angle, whatever you want to call it, when you're at the saddle, the angle of attack from the fret to the saddle increases as you come up the neck. Now I'm not saying that you can be sloppy on your fret work, but you have a lot more forgiveness down here than you do up in the first position. So I'm, I can actually see I got a little bit to take off here and here. And I can actually see now, I've hit the black. So he can take, because the next step will be crowning and dressing the fret ends. So now that I know that I have my fret plane reasonably trued up, and I'm gonna sight down it. And if, as you look down there, you can see all of the frets are nice and easy. The black right now is giving a false read because there's black ink on there. But when we clean this up, you'll see that that's nice and true. The pillar file has a safe edge. It's a very, very fine cut. And now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to break these sharp corners that I created from the angling process. And what I'm doing, let's see, this might be a little bit of file. And I'm just walking it and rolling across it. So if this was my file, I'm just kind of, and this is my fret end, I'm just doing this. All right? And then I'll come back and I'll do this. And then when I level the frets, or I shouldn't say level, but when I dress the frets and polish, I'll take care of the top of the fret. So, and it's just a little flick of the wrist. All I'm doing is taking that sharp, corner from all of the geometry we just put in. So I can rub my finger up this way and it feels good. That way, not so much. And don't push very hard because you can leave a mark on the fretboard. And you can see I'm just following up with my fingers. I'm coming up. Now when you get over the body, you kind of got to learn to do a little snap filing. You don't play up here, but you still want to have them nice. 
Now when I run my finger up and down there, it feels pretty good. One right here is a little, little touchy yet. Now the next tool I'll be using will be the crowning file and I'm going to take a fret protector and sandpaper to do the polishing. So I'm going to start right here. When you're going over the body you got to be very careful because you don't want to gouge it in and the tape will help do that. Now some people will tape their tape the fretboards off. Some people use fret protectors. Uh, which technique you want to use is all up to you. So I can see my flicking here. And that actually feels comfortable. So now that fret ends are dressed, we're good to go. Now, the next step, we're going to crown the fret ends. Okay, now this is a fretting crown file. Now there's a couple of different kinds out there. Normally I like to use a diamond file. This is a, probably an old Gurian style that we got from Stumac. But you can see there's just a radius on the file. So now I'm going to remark my my uh, fret tops. Now I'm just going to remark the top of the fret wire. Now when I actually get into doing this, I want you to think school bus, not a pipe. We want to have a nice arc on the top of the fret. Now this is just going to shape them, then after I'm done with that, then I'm going to polish them. I'm going to use a couple of grits of sandpaper, so I'm going to need like a 600 grit sandpaper to 2000. And when I do the fret polishing, I want something that's soft, so when I put it on here, I'm not grinding a flat to this. I'm not looking at totally rounding. I want to leave a little strip of black on the top of the fret. Where I see I have a, uh, a big flat, see how I'm kind of working back and forth. Because I don't want a flat spot. I want to get a nice little radius going. Now for those of you that have trouble with your fret ends, you could also cheat and use this tool for rounding the fret end a little bit, and I'll show you that trick in a minute. It's more common to have a flat spot near the end of the fret, but you can see how I'm just going to rock in and you can come in at an angle on one side, an angle on the other. As long as you can see that bead of ink on the top, you know you haven't lowered that fret. And again, you aren't pressing very hard with your, maybe a pen. And I'm watching the corner, the sharp corners that I've created. And I'm just knocking that off. Kind of opposite the way I'm work, but I'm just trying to help working with the camera. Now I can. I call this snap fine for lack of a better term. I don't know how to describe the motion, but it's just a little jerk.
I'm going to take 600 and you, again you aren't pushing you're just polishing so I'm just going to do a little bit of rubbing and you'll watch the tool marks from the file go away that's all I want to do We're going to start using this one. There I go. So at this point, the first stage is to get most of the file marks out, and you're removing any residual magic marker. And as soon as this is not cutting, find a new piece, a new area of the sandpaper that is. And because the cork is going to crush, it's not going to put a flat spot on the thread. And it's a little tougher over the body because you don't want to hit the top. But once you get over here, then you can get a little bit more aggressive. And you can see how it just fills up with metal filings right away. And another nice thing about this, this gives you hand cramps, which is really, lets you know you're alive. Okay, I'm, I'm nearing the end of the fretboard, then I'm going to just change to a different grit. And it's just going to be a process of different grits till I get the frets polished. And you can come back with a little fret level a rocking, whatever you want to call it, you can go over the frets to see if you have a high one. Uh, hopefully you don't. It's all about your technique on how you're sanding. So now I went from 600 to 1500 and I'm going to cut these in a little bit smaller pieces. And you'll get to see up here as I start going to the finer grits how nice the frets start looking. Okay, now the frets are reasonably polished, and you can see I got crap on my hands, so I'm going to go wash my hands for the next step because I don't want to be handling the guitar with metal filings on my fingers. Okay, so now I got clean hands. I'm now going to just rub the fretboard down again with 4 rot steel wool, I'm going to clean her up. Now, we can see, pretty nice, so you can now see the frets are in line, they're ready to go, we have a fret job. So the next step is, we're going to do a nut, but that's how I do my frets. Um, if you don't have a straight edge, like a little, oh here. A machinist scale is very good because you can come down here and as you go over the frets you'll find your high fret or a low fret because you'll hear it click. Now down here I know it drops off and you'll you'll see so that's the high fret but this is fretboard one fretboard two and as you can see we don't have any high frets so that fret job is complete and now the next step will be doing the nuts and that will be another video. From our shop to yours, thank you Jimmy. Bye.
That's a hint for Jimmy to get a fret protector. <laughs> Wake up. No luthiers were injured in this video. Yet. Now, I was going to say, you have to say yet. Okay. Things we forgot to stage before we did our... Bloopers. Bloopers.